From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Afternoon Edition. Breaking news on the Afternoon Edition. A plea deal for the president's son collapses. Hunter Biden today pleading not guilty to tax and gun charges. Good afternoon. I'm Ryan Yamamoto. And I'm Elizabeth Cook. The judge in this case is asking for more information. Skylar Henry is following all the developments from Wilmington, Delaware. Skylar? Hey, listen, Ryan, good to be with the both of you. The line in the sand, if you will, for this judge with the terms of this plea arrangement, especially considering that there are outstanding investigations into Hunter Biden that could lead to possible or pending charges, simply saying that she cannot move forward with this agreement because doing so would be a rubber stamp deal. Hunter Biden remains in legal jeopardy after a plea deal with federal prosecutors fell apart in court. The deal unraveled when Judge Mariella Narika questioned whether the agreement gave the president's son immunity from all crimes or just the three charges he currently faces. She obviously had a lot of questions today. She was concerned about the propriety of reaching a plea agreement when there are still outstanding possible pending charges and ongoing investigation against Hunter Biden. And so she kicked the tires on this deal and at the end of the day said, look, I just can't approve this. Biden has now pled not guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges charges and a felony gun charge. The two sides have two weeks to work on an agreement before they're due in court again. Meanwhile, investigations into Hunter Biden's business dealings will continue. Republicans say they want to hear directly from the prosecutor who recommended the plea deal. They're calling for him to testify before Congress. We've got this weird uh, lack of, of clarity as to whether the, the Delaware uh, uh, U.S. attorney was able to pursue the investigation fully, whether he did fully. U.S. attorney David Weiss, a Trump appointee, says he is willing to testify. Weiss has also told Congress in writing that he had the ultimate authority on the case. Now, Skyler, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy cited IRS whistleblowers as one reason he could look into an impeachment inquiry into President Biden's activities. Yeah. What do today's developments signal for that particular statement? Well, if you listen to House Speaker McCarthy, he'll say that what those whistleblowers had to say earlier this month is more than enough cost to continue to look into whether what Hunter Biden was doing is tied to what President Biden has done over the course of the past five, if not longer, years. You'll remember those whistleblowers said that over the course of their investigation, they were either handcuffed or railroaded from going down certain inroads, if you will, that could have potentially led to implications tying what Hunter Biden was doing to President Biden. That was enough to spur up interest for Republicans to try to consider this impeachment inquiry. Now, several of them were asked about that earlier today down on Capitol Hill. They said that there's not enough there to do so yet, but they are still investigating. Meanwhile, the White House says that Republicans are doing everything that they can to try to tie President Biden to this, even though he's done nothing wrong. Guys. Skylar Henry, thanks so much. Okay, we have some breaking news out of Contra Costa County. This is a live look at Highway 24 westbound. Highway 24 now closed from Pleasant Hill Road to Central Lafayette. This is the chopper over a parking lot near where they say, a witness says, there were two cars firing shots at each other. This, once again, happening along Highway 24, which is closed between Pleasant Hill Road and Central Lafayette. Uh, once again, the Highway Patrol is looking for evidence on the freeway, so if you can, avoid this area if possible. And if you know Highway 24, of course, is that main corridor as it connects Oakland through the Caldecott Tunnel down to the Concord and Walnut Creek area. Uh, it looks like a very large police presence right now. We'll keep an eye on this and have more information as we get new information. And developing in Antioch, community leaders pushing for change in the police department. This comes after Chief Stephen Ford stepped down while the department is already dealing with a racist and homophobic texting scandal, all uncovered by the FBI. No interim chief has been named. People in the community are asking for someone who more reflects where they live. We spoke to Mayor Lamar Thorpe about this morning about the search. Well, Antioch is the second most racially diverse city in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I, I understand the sentiments that people are expressing. And the mayor says a national search is now underway for a new city manager who is in charge of picking the police chief. And right now, the city of Vallejo is under a state of emergency. That's because their police department is severely understaffed. There are 51 openings in the department, and while Vallejo is actively recruiting, it takes a long time to fill those gaps. The Solano County Sheriff's Office could take over law enforcement if the city 
cannot get more officers. Let's take a live look at San Francisco, where Mayor London Breed just signed the budget for the next two years. Now, this budget has money to hire more police officers, fund more shelter beds, and tax breaks for new businesses. There are some businesses that can make it rain for San Francisco. They can afford to. But there are other businesses, especially like our retailers, that are struggling, and we are seeing the impacts on a lot of the decisions that we've made around taxes. And so I appreciate the Board of Supervisors and their willingness to make some adjustments so that we can move forward. Now, this budget has received some pushback from housing advocates who are against the moving of Proposition C funds from, tra from transitional housing to the creation of shelter beds. Okay, let's turn to weather right now. Let's get the first alert meteorologist, Jessica Birch, some sunshine, some blue skies out there, but a lot cooler than it was in the last couple of days. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. Since the beginning of this month, we've been dealing with heat wave after heat wave after heat wave, and they always landed on the weekend, too. But... Hear me out. This weekend, gorgeous weather right around the corner for us. But let's start off with today. Oakland alone, daytime highs this afternoon are actually going to be warming up into the 80s and 90s, off in our East Inland Hills, even down into San Jose. But for our friends near Oakland, a lot cooler in the 70s. Now, once we head all the way into the Oracle Park later this afternoon, we're actually going to be warming up into the 60s just in time for that game happening this afternoon. The Oakland A's taking on the Giants just at 645. We're expecting 60s quickly turning into 50s, and we have a big weather change in the forecast for us. Below average conditions heading into this weekend. I'll have more on that in a bit, but for now, back to you. All right, thanks, Jess. Game two, the Battle of the Bay between the A's and Giants happening tonight. This, a day after A's fans got Giants fans to join their cause to try to keep the team in Oakland. Or Jocelyn Moran has more from Oracle. Well, if you were inside the ballpark, you definitely heard those chants. They were loud. Yesterday, we mentioned there were two groups that organized this, and they were asking fans to chant, sell the team, come to the top of the fifth inning. But sometimes it went even beyond that. You heard the chants earlier in the game, and even after the fifth inning, this is what it sounded like. A sea of green, gold, orange, and black. You had people wearing those sell t-shirts, and it wasn't just Ace fans chanting sell the team. Giants fans joined in as well as they held those Unite the Bay posters. If you weren't at the game, you still knew something was going on. You could hear the chants loud and clear through the broadcast in the top of the fifth inning as the Giants were pitching. Swing the line drive. And the broadcast acknowledged A's fans as well. You saw fans holding those posters there. One read, Bay Area Baseball Forever. Another one read, Save the Bay Bridge Series. And that's what it came down to. This is a friendly rivalry, and many Giants fans want to keep the A's in Oakland as well. The A's continue their push to get John Fisher to sell the team, and they're loyal and passionate. This is Andre Arroyo, who you're about to hear from. He's from San Leandro. He went to the game in A's gear, head to toe. I'm here to represent my team to show my my love and respect for this team. And this franchise does not deserve to be in Vegas. And you can hear it in his voice as well. A's fans are hurting. As far as where things stand as of now, the A's are petitioning the league to let them relocate with plans to build a ballpark on the Vegas Strip. League owners still need to vote to approve it. Regardless of what happens, this is definitely going to be a night to remember. And if you were at the game, you're going to want to keep those posters because it's not every day that you see two fan bases unite. And first pitch is at 6.45 tonight. The Giants beat the A's last night 2-1. to one. And the 49ers are off and running at training camp. And the team has a big update at the quarterback position. That's ahead in the Red and Gold Report. But first, what if you never had to buy batteries again? We can take you inside the Fremont Company, hoping to make that dream a reality.